Good afternoon. It has been a long time since I got to do a children's revival. I'm so excited to be part of Super Church today. I've been asking you to think about being physically healthy and how we can make our minds healthy. And we even talked a little bit about our spirit, the part that's going to live on after my body is gone. My spirit will continue to live. God's interested in my spirit. He is powerful. There's nothing that he really can't do. When I was the age of some view, I was, I guess, eight. I came home from school one day and I was really hurting. I mean, bad. And mom tried to do some work to fix it up. And gave me some aspirin. And I was sick. I was hurting. Have you ever hurt? I mean, where that nothing that your mom or any other adult was able that they could do that would make you feel better? Well, that's that's the way I was. She took me to the doctor the next day, and the doctor looked at me, and pushed around on my stomach where I was hurting, and he said. Carlton has appendicitis and I didn't know what appendicitis was I just knew I was hurting and this was a little town there wasn't real good medical care and so the doctor told my mom take him home put him to bed put an ice pack on the spot that's hurting so mom did that. I kept hurting and it kept getting worse and worse and worse. And late in the night, she was really concerned. They thought maybe I was gonna die. And she called a preacher. Our pastor was gone, so she couldn't call him. She called a preacher who was helping our church while the pastor was out of town and said, my little boy's sick. He's really hurting. Could you come pray for him? So the preacher came. It was all late at night. And uh, he knelt beside my bed. I still had that ice pack right on my side. And he laid hands on me and prayed in Jesus' name for me to be healed. And do you know, it wasn't but a few minutes till I went right on to sleep. And when I woke up the next morning, I did not have one bit of pain. Jesus had healed me. It's good to have someone who has that kind of power interested in any part of our life. It's good to have him interested in our spirit as well. I got to thinking about his power and what he could do when people like you pray you ever been an earthquake we don't get too many of those in Missouri my wife and I were in California decades ago preaching for somebody we'd gone to lunch after the Sunday morning service and sitting in the restaurant and suddenly the building began to shake and right over our head was this massive wooden chandelier. If, if it had fallen, it would have done, I mean, it would have really hurt or maybe even done worse to some of us. So this chandelier, this big light begins to wave back and forth. And I look at the pastor and I say, what do we do? He said, Carlton, it's an earthquake. There isn't anywhere to go, and there isn't much to do. When the church was young, just like the church you come to, there was a time when two preachers, their names were Peter and John, they went to early morning prayer meeting. You know, like your 
Dad comes to our once a month, seven o'clock on Sunday prayer meeting. Well, these guys went to prayer, but they, they did it more often than that. They did it every day. So they were going on the way to prayer, and they saw a fella who was sitting there, and he was a beggar. You, you may have seen people around our city or some other city who have a sign that says, uh, helpless, hungry. Well, that person is a modern, that's today's version of a beggar. Well, this fella, everybody was walking by him. There weren't any cars, so he had a little cup, and he would beg. He would ask, money, money, money. The word he used was alms, but it means money. People would come by, and they'd drop a coin in, and he would be thankful to them. He was lame. He'd been that way since he'd been born, and he deserved to be a beggar, if anybody ever did he he needed help so he's there and Peter and John on the way to prayer and Peter looks at that fella and he says look on us and the guy looks up at him and I don't know if I'd been that beggar I'd have been thinking here comes a big offering he wants to know who it is that has given him this money well, if that's what he was looking for, he was disappointed because Peter said, silver and gold, have I none? I don't have any money. You ever been that way? I have. I don't have any money. But what I have, I give to you. He reached out and he took his hand. Peter took that beggar's hand. He didn't know the beggar. He took his hand and said, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. And he lifted him to his feet. And that man, he began to walk and not just walk, he began to leap. And what would you have done? Well, he, he was trying his legs out. He wanted to make sure they were all working. But he didn't just do that. Walking and leaping praising God. Can you, you, you've heard people shout hallelujah or praise the Lord or thank you Jesus. Well, that's praising the Lord. So he's walking and leaping and praising God. This, this is going to shock you, but there were people who were not happy that a miracle had happened. So they called Peter and John in and asked them, what had taken place and they explained it to them and these guys said well tell you what y'all just go but don't go be talking about this Jesus anymore we've had enough of that already and so they went back to where there was a group of other people in their church waiting kind of like what we would have gathered when we have pre-service prayer when Peter and John got there, they began to tell them about the lame man being healed. I, I imagine they already knew, but began to tell them more about it, and maybe what he said and how he acted. And, and uh, that'd be a great story to tell, wouldn't it? That you had prayed for somebody and reached out and lifted them up. and That'd be a great testimony. If that happens to you one day, please come tell Pastor Butler and and say, look, Pastor, I got something to say. Because it's a story worth telling. Well, they were telling all about that. And, and uh, as they were talking, the Holy Ghost, the Spirit, the, but it's the Spirit of God. We were talking about human spirits, the part that lasts. Well, this is God's Spirit. And it's been around for a long, long time. And it will fill us up. It will fill our spirit if we will allow it to. Well, while they're talking about this, the Holy Spirit came in that room. And they began to 
prophesy and they begin to talk to each other about the victory of God. And the Bible says the place was shaken. There was an earthquake. Lights begin to move and the walls begin to quake and the doors I an earthquake. Because Peter and John had had a regular time of prayer. Do you have a regular time of prayer? You probably should. Right before you go to school would be a good time. Maybe right before you go to bed would be another. Not only did they have a regular time of prayer, which was good for their spirit. We talked about taking care of our body and the little pre-super church information through the week. We, we talked about taking care of your mind. Well, now, there's a taking care of the Spirit because they're going to pray. And not only did they pray, but they saw somebody who needed help. And they tried to help them. Not through their strength, not through their money, but in the name of Jesus. In your class, there's some other child that kids pick on, kind of mean to him, is bullied a little bit. He may be a different color of skin or may not be quite as smart as somebody else or could have moved here from a different country and doesn't speak English real well. You know, I wonder if that wouldn't be the kind of person that Peter and John stopped by to try to help. Peter and John are not here, but you are. And I am. And God can use you to work in their lives as well. Think about it this way. You can have a time when you take care of your spirit, that part that's going to live forever. You have a time where you take care of your spirit just like you brush your teeth. Just like you take care of your homework, whether you really want to or not. You you do it because you, well, sometimes we do it because, being honest, because mom or dad or grandmom or some, somebody's going to come looking and so we know we better have it done. But Sometimes we're a little better at it and we do it because you know, it's going to help me. I, I need to learn this stuff. You have a time to take care of your spirit. It's real, real easy. Just a few minutes to pray and a few minutes in the Bible. And I'll tell you what I'm going to do for you this week. On, on our Facebook, church Facebook page, I'm going to put a little super church note from now till Friday. And each day I'm going to just ask you to read just one paragraph of Scripture from the Bible. If you can't read that paragraph, um, I'll ask some adult there to, to help you read it. And I, I'm going to try to drop in some things that you can help me pray about. You see, I believe you have faith. And faith is that belief of God. You you have great confidence. And as we move into this new building, it's going to be so exciting. The super church room, you won't believe how nice it's going to be. Great, great big old gym. We can start playing basketball, volleyball. But we need some praying going on about something. Would you, would you help me with that? 
Okay, so be looking for what I'm going to be sending you. Jesus, I thank you today for your goodness. I appreciate your goodness and your mercy. I'm so glad I got to speak to this group today. They're my friends. So many of them come, and even in the virus, they uh, they want to give a hug or uh, they want to be hugged. I love all of that. It just makes it worth going and doing. God, there are some young men and young ladies in this that they can become a person of prayer now and it be with them the rest of their life. God, let us be healthy in our spirit just like we are in our mind and body. I pray for our young people, our children, we're back in school now, protect them, protect them from predators, protect them from the coronavirus, protect them in every sense of the word. In Jesus' name, amen. Hey, you do know Pastor Butler loves you. You do know that I love you. And when you get your school pictures in, he and I both want one. We have a spot where we can look at them and when we see your picture, we pray for you. Is that a deal? Okay. Look to get them. Love y'all. And I will see you in a day or so.